Welcome to another scriptural study. In this scriptural study, we will be exploring the writings of Hanok and the Babylonian New Moon. And we'll be doing somewhat of a deep dive on chapter 78, both from a scriptural standpoint and astronomical point of view. With a keen interest on securing a two to three scriptural and astronomical empirical witness approach. And we will share why empirically that verse 8 of Hanok truly reveals why the moon and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the 15th day. On the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah. Because, hallelujah, Hanak did say that the moon and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the 15th day, just like so many Bereans observed and verified that tested and proved this in creation before sunrise this past week on the 15th day high Sabbath of unleavened bread, again commencing at sunrise. On the pagan day of Friday, May 3rd, 2019. And we remain thankful for all of the film and photograph footage proving why Hanok stated what he did. Hallelujah! for Bereans who test and prove all things in creation with two, three, and yes, even more witnesses with the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah, as they are fully aware of the three witnesses of the moon, just as Hanok was with the three witnesses after the sunset time period for the moon and before the sunrise time period for the moon each day and every day of every month. Why is this so important as it relates to the three witnesses of the moon and the fact that Hanok wrote that the moon and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the 15th day, just as we all experienced. Because... Can you imagine if any one of us ignored the two and or three witness approach and guidance of scripture to establish a matter and then regrettably only applied a one witness approach and thus as horrifying as it is only utilizing one witness with the percent illumination of the moon towards the writings of Hanok in chapter 78, verse 8. Here is the chaos and confusion. And what happens when anyone applies the one witness approach? And worse yet, only utilizes a computer program like Stellarium and only checks out percent illumination of the moon and doesn't go outside to test and prove and verify in full. Because... At sunset on the 14th day of the first month of Abib, which was on the pagan day of Thursday, May 2nd, which was the night before the 15th day, the moon was actually 4.4% illuminated in my area. And by sunrise, at the commencement of the 15th day, which was a high Sabbath for unleavened bread, which was the pagan day of Friday, May 3rd, the moon in my area again was 6.6% illuminated. And with a non-scriptural one witness approach, you could indeed create massive chaos by stating that this particular chapter and verse of Hanok must be wrong. But is this true? What if we just remained true Bereans? who test and prove all things with just a two witness approach because hallelujah, the celestial clock and calendar of Yahuwah has a fixed orderly system of universal laws, which do indeed provide a second witness of the position of the moon in degrees to the horizon in which anyone can observe 
in creation. But if you are a non-scriptural one witness practitioner only, working off a computer program and not going outside to number all your days as per scripture, then you will indeed be oblivious to the position of the moon and when it is below the horizon, let alone what days of the month at sunset when this always happens astronomically, which for those that do number all their days, they are fully aware this happens in the middle of the month, just as the moon was below the horizon in my area on the 14th night of the first month of Abib at sunset, and remained below the horizon all through the night until after sunrise on the high Sabbath of the 15th day of the first month of Abib. Yes, the moon was slightly illuminated, but no one could see it, as it was below the horizon in the mid-month time period, in which the moon moves into its conjunction phase and then to its crescent moon phase, which is nothing more than the non-scriptural, elusive Babylonian new moon system, which Hanok was well aware of. And why, on this YouTube channel, we have always promoted the full moon phase as day one of every scriptural month. Just like Hanak stated in chapter 78, verses 12 through 13, in which other scriptural passages are referred to that we cover in full in our ongoing workshops. And thus why Hanok knew that the moon and all her remaining light disappears wholly on the 15th. And thus why it is so important to utilize all scriptural and astronomical witnesses. And to think we have only shared two witnesses. And there are more. But we will share those witnesses as well when other non-scriptural one-witness alert opportunities present themselves. The other value-added feature of late with the ongoing Celestial Clock and Calendar workshops has been the exercises in Berean feedback, based on personal experiences why there remain so many one-witness only practitioners let alone folks that have an extreme desire with feeble attempts to eliminate the writings of Hanok. As such, facilitators in the workshops are sharing excellent examples, again based on past personal experiences, with 1 Kepha chapter 3 verse 15 and 16, to help those who will stay in the one witness arena for the multitude of reasons that they do this and thus find themselves regrettably taking away from Scripture and taking away from what exactly happens in the heavens with the sun, moon, and stars, day after day, month after month, and year after year. We continue to call upon the name that these scriptural study videos provide value to you and your loved ones. Until next time, all the best in the name which is above all names.